If you want to use infantry as your main troop, it can be very difficult trying to decide which commanders to invest in, and they are essential if you're going to use infantry. So today, I will be giving you the infantry investment plan from the earliest stages of the game all the way up till Season of Conquest. I will give you basically up to about three marches you could build. I will give you a whale infantry investment plan and a free-to-play infantry investment plan. So if you are interested in maining infantry or you want to make your infantry do that much better, you definitely should check out today's video. Let's begin off with the earliest stages of the early game, and we're talking like before KVK1. And the best infantry commander before KVK1 is straight up just Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu, you max him, you have a great commander. Put in level 60, run him as a primary, you've still got an amazing commander. And if you want to run just epics, you just get Beyond Ironside, and there you go. You've got yourself a full epic infantry march. That's just going to be amazing on the open field. And it's going to do very good KVK1. It's going to be solid in KVK2. Obviously, after that, it's unusable. But for those two KVKs and Priest KVK1, it's going to do amazing. Sun Tzu is bringing massive AoE. And Beyond Ironside is kind of like a stat boosting commander who's also doing uh, some type of area of effect damage to two enemies. So it is quite a good two march ball. And I think that's going to be pretty good if you're running infantry in the early game. Then you have to make a decision for your account, and this is up to you. Do you get Richard or not? And this depends. First of all, are you going to be AoE farming? And I mean, like, actually going to just AoE farm a crap load. So if you're a whale who knows you're going to max YSG, or you're maxing YSG regardless, and you're going to AoE farm, then Richard is actually a fairly good option for you. Or if you want to have a really good KVK 1 and 2, and you might guess you don't really care about hindering your Season 3 and Season of Conquest pairings, then once again, you can still get a Richard and use him. Though if you want to be as efficient as possible and not hinder yourself in Season of Conquest and in Season 3, and you want to set your account up just to be as good as it can be for those seasons, don't get Richard, skip him. If you do get Richard, I wouldn't take him past 5511. And if you're a whale, I definitely wouldn't be taking him past 5551. At that point, he's got about 80 to 85% of his value, and it's just not worth going any further. Now for KVK1, you've got a few options. Most infantry players will have some type of a Charles Martel at some level, either through purchasing the daily bundles or even just getting very lucky from gold chest. And if you have 5111 Charles Martel, he's probably better than Bjorn Ironside, I'd say for the field personally, I think he's going to do better. So for KVK1, I'd maybe run a Charles Martel with a Sun Tzu. Great march. That's actually a really good march and it's going to trade amazingly. Like I said before, Bjorn Ironside and Sun Tzu is always still an option. That is another great march for KVK1, especially and if you have a Richard, Richard with Sun Tzu is going to do better than a Charles Martel with Sun Tzu. If you want to run two marches, you do Beyond Ironside Sun Tzu and then Richard Charles, or you do Sun Tzu with Richard and Ethelfled with Charles Martel. Those are your best two KVK1 marches. So now you've reached Season 2 and you get access to two more commanders, and you get access to Alexander the Great and Constantine. And so for Constantine, to begin with, only if you're a Mega Whale. If you're a Big Whale and you want to do Sunset Canyon, you want to do Lost Canyon, and you want to buff people on the field in your first KVK, Get a Constantine, put him with Joan, that's a great march. If you're not a whale, skip Constantine completely and just never look back on him. He's not a good commander past Season 2, and he's only good in Canyon for the most part. Now, as for Alex, he's very good in Season 2, like the top commander in Season 2 by far and away. But if you're choosing Alexander the Great, you're making a sacrifice once again, like I said with Richard. You're probably only going to get the max value out of Alex for like a half or maybe two-thirds of a KVK, which is about a month. And it's really not worth it, in my opinion. If I were most players, I'd say just skip Alex. And if you're running two marches in KVK1, merge those marches. Choose your two best commanders. So let's say you're running a Charles Ethelflaet and a Richard Sun Tzu. Maybe run just a Charles Richard. Or run a Charles Sun Tzu or Richard Sun Tzu. That's probably your best bet. If you want to choose Alex, though, I'd say you have to have not invested in Richard. So don't have a Richard. And then only take him to like 5511. At most, 5551. If you are a higher VIP or you spend some amount of money, you can also choose to buy a few commanders from the daily bundles. And the best daily bundle commanders for KVK2 would have to be probably Alexander the Great or, or buying a Charles Martel. Either one of those. You could also consider Julius Caesar or Mehmed if you want to run a Scipio Mehmed or Scipio Caesar, which I will talk about that a little bit later. And so the best bundle is got to be Alexander the Great. I think it's worth buying him until Guan comes out or until Harold comes out, one of those commanders. Definitely Alexander the Great is going to be your top option until you basically reach Season 3. So the marches to run are either like a Charles Martel with a Sun Tzu, or you could run a Richard with a Sun Tzu, or you could run just straight up Sun Tzu and Beyond Ironside if you want to save your gold heads. It's going to be rough, but it's going to work if you really want to fight. 
Sun Tribune Ironside, save all your gold heads. You're going to get mediocre trades at best. If it gets hit, it's going to trade rubbish. But if you want to save your gold heads and set yourself up best for Season 3, you're in a tough spot and you basically have to run just those two epic commanders. Now, as for optimizing your marches, which I spoke about before, basically making them as strong as possible, first of all, we have Civilization, and there are two. First, you have the Ottoman Empire. I know it's an a archer civilization, but it basically makes your troops as powerful as they can be if you're running other troop types. So if you're a whale and you're running other troop types, Ottoman Civilization, pick that, guaranteed. If you're an infantry main, there's two options. First, you could go for the Viking Civilization. The troop counterattack is actually really good. Whenever you get hit, you're going to deal a little bit more damage back. And the Berserkers are probably the strongest infantry unit on their own. So that's probably why Vikings are good. Or you could go with France and you get an increase of 3% troop health. You get some wood gathering. And the best thing is the hospital healing speed. That's really good for free to plays, especially if you're below VIP 15. And you still get throwing Axemen, which once again are a good unit. And I mean, you could consider Rome, but in my opinion, they're a little bit more nuanced. It's kind of, you have to run a march that's got low stats. So maybe if you're running the double epic commanders, you could actually run Rome, get the infantry defense and the march speed, because I know the epic commanders are somewhat slow and they're also an option. But I think the best civilization is probably France for the hospital healing speed, since that's going to benefit you the most. As for equipment, there's one thing I really want to make a point on, and that's the gatekeeper's shield. Let me try and find it. The gatekeeper's shield is a very, very cheap piece of equipment. And you run this with any troop, it's going to be amazing. Talented, it's hectic. 10% troop health when talented. Amazing stats right there for a weapon that's super cheap. Look at these material costs, is basically nothing. So if you want to run infantry, Gatekeeper Shield is amazing value. As for actual like pieces, I think that you can run the Windswept Warhelm or the full Windswept set if you want to have just smart speed. So if you notice you're getting caught out in the field a lot, you could actually use Windswept and get away from battles really quick. And then it, since you're maybe saving all your gold heads if you're a free to play, then you could maybe devote some of your gems toward getting better equipment. I think trying to get the four piece set bonus for the infantry set and making sure that you're running the legendary leadership greaves and the legendary leadership boots are going to benefit you the most since the best infantry boots are defense, but the leadership boots do give you health. You could also consider still running the infantry boots and maybe swapping out some of the other infantry pieces, but that's up to you to figure out. Just make sure that you're running the leadership pants since they definitely beat out the infantry set because the infantry set for the pants is only some defense when you could be getting a bunch of health instead. If you want to run epic equipment, make sure that you're looking into Quinn Soul is very good. Or you could even get Hope Cloak. This is a much easier to access. You can get this on the Crystal Chest. And we all know Crystal Chests are very easy to access. So Crystal Chest, if you can get Hope Cloak, is actually pretty good. You're just forfeiting the 10% march speed that you would be getting from the infantry set bonus. And I think the march speed is quite essential once you reach Season of Conquest. So I would try and get it. Also, make sure you at least fill in your accessory slots with something. Silent Trial is your best epic accessory. Now that you've arrived in Season of Conquest, you have access to about 10 more commanders. If I'm counting like off, off the top of my head, there's around 10 more. And they are the best infantry commanders in the game. You have access to the best. So the two routes you've gone, either you've gone in and you've got an Alex at some level, maybe it's 5551, 5511. If you do have an Alex at any of those levels, then slap him with your CPR Africanus. That's going to be a decent march. It's going to trade fairly good. Yes, it's going to eventually lose its touch and it's going to lose its value over the next two to three commander cycles. Basically, over the next year, it's going to become a fairly weak march. But for the most part, it's going to hit hard enough now and it's going to trade good enough now. It's got a lot of march speed as well. So you just run that. CPO with an Alex if you picked him up. If not, I wouldn't pick up Alex now in season three. It's just not worth it. If you have a Charles Martel and he's a really high level, maybe you use gold heads on him, which I don't recommend. But if you did, you run a Charles Martel with a CPO and that's also going to be a great option. Now for you players who thought really far ahead in the future and you've saved all your gold heads, you're a high VIP, you've saved a ton of gems, then your best bet is just to get these two commanders. First of all, infantry will comes around, go ballistic, max spin either CPO or Sargon, but make sure you unlock both of them. Try and get the unlock on both of those commanders because they are going to be your now main murder ball. Starting off, Get your CPO to 5551. You are sitting in a great position right there with a 5551 CPO. His expertise is pretty good, but it's not that needed since you probably won't be running a Guan if you're a free to play who just got Season of Conquest. Since I'm saying run Sargon, I think he's just way stronger. He's going to give you more value in the long run, and he's definitely a better commander overall. Trades are saying it, though Guan is giving you a silence, and I'll talk about him in a minute. For Sargon, get him to 5550. Do not max the fourth skill, do not unlock the fourth skill. That means keeping Sargon at star level 3. Do not take him to star level 4. Then put the CPO with your Sargon, and then you're in a great position. So you're running a CPO with a Sargon, and then the first commander I would expertise personally 
East Sargon. I would go in and expertise the Sargon if you have enough gold heads. And that's going to be a very solid match. I'd probably just keep CPU at 5551. Honestly, I think the next infantry commanders will be a better CPO in some ways. That's up to you to decide. But personally, I'd keep CPO at 5551. Or if you just want the damage and you don't care about debuffs that Sargon's bringing, expertise the CPO, then you're going to have more damage, though you will be lacking on debuffs. Now, if you want to just do pure damage, you don't care about Sargon's really good debuffs, then you're going to just get a Guan. 5155, five, five, max first skill, don't max second skill, max the next two skills. Run in with the CPO, you're in a great position. You can also get Guan for you whales and medium spenders from the daily special offer, and that is a very good value for an infantry player. You pick up Guan if you're a medium spender or a whale, and you put him with your CPO, you could actually run two very good marches, because I presume you bought Alex in the daily bundle as well. You can actually run a CPO with a Guan. So Guan and a CPO, very good pair. And then you run a Sargon with an Alex, since I'm sure you've got Alex on the daily bundle. That's going to be really good. That's going to trade amazingly. And you're going to be having A, a very fast march with your Alex, and Sargon is pretty fast. And B, you're going to be having the crazy debuffs from CPO and Guan, and you're going to have Alexander the Great's buff, and you're going to have Sargon's debuff. Great two marches there, and I highly recommend it. For you Mega Whales, you've spent a ton of money. You've probably maxed Alex. You probably have a thousand gold heads, if not two max commanders worth of gold heads in your storage right now. You get the Seasonal Conquest, 5551 five, CPO, 5550 five, Sargon, and then I'd probably pick up Tarek, if I'm being real. I'd run CPO with a Sargon, and then also I'd run an Alex with a Tarek. Then I would get a Guan, and I'd probably replace the Alex with the Guan and eventually buy Harold and run Alex with Harold. At that point, you'll be running CPO with Sargon. You'll be running Alex with a Harold and you'll be running a Guan with a Tarek. Three very good marches right there. As for some alternatives, if you don't want to pick up A, a Sargon or B, a Guan, because you know Guan's not going to be very good from now, from a year or so from now, then you go in and get some of these leadership commanders. Julius Caesar, I really like him. He is less damage than Mehmed, but he's more tanky, more march speed and more maneuverability. Mehmed, a lot more damage, still fairly tanky, and you got a bit of a skill damage boost as well. Up to you to decide which one you get, but make sure they're at least 5511 before you do use them. With Mehmed, you run in with your CPO, definitely, and then you'd maybe run a Sargon with a Guan. So you'd run CPO Mehmed, Sargon Guan, or Guan Sargon, and that's going to be really good. Or you run CPO Caesar, and then Guan Sargon. Same thing works for whales. Really big whales can pick up Honda as well and run a CPO with a Honda. That's going to do better than both Mehmed and Caesar though it is a lot more expensive. So what I would do is if you're a free-to-play and you don't want to pick up Sargon, or you want to use a Alex with a Sargon and you know you've got enough gold heads to do maybe Scipio as well, you go 5551 Scipio with Mehmed, 5550 Sargon with an Alexander the Great. That's your best bet. Now, museum relics for infantry players are nowhere near as simple as archers and calves. So for an infantry player, I'd probably just pick up either Mehmed or Caesar. They're your best bets for relics and then run him with like your CPO. That's your best option. If you really want to pick up Charles Martel and you're going to be using him some way in a middle, maybe a Charles Martel Earthfled, Charles Martel Caesar, or Mehmed, you could go for Charles Martel's Relic as well. Though I think it's best to just save the Relic coins and Exhibit coins if you're not running Mehmed or Caesar. They're very, very good commanders, and they're probably your best bet as an infantry main. Richard is also an option, though I think his Relic is kind of lackluster, and it's once again probably not worth the Exhibit coins and Relic coins. I just max the Mehmed Relic and max the Caesar Relic, and then you'll be very good to go. As for equipment, if you're a free-to-play player, low spender, I presume you've only got one infantry set that's got the four-piece bonus. That means running these four pieces I've just clicked on. What I would do is I'd put that four-piece set on whichever march has your Sargon, because your Sargon's active skill needs you to kind of be sticking to the opponent like a pest. You want to stick to them and be using as many turns as you can on them. If you have two sets of this, then I'd put the second set on whichever march is your best performing march or your worst performing march, depending how you like to build your motorball. If you're a whale, you're just going to buy three sets and be running out in all three of your marches, and that's certainly reasonable as well. As for accessories, I think Horn of Fury is very good for Sargon, especially trying to throw the active skill as much as possible, and Ring of Doom, like usual, is great on any of your marches. You can try and get that Concealed Dagger and put it on your Sargon because he will be sticking to people like pests, or you can actually just run a Call of the Loyal to get even more march speed to stick to people as much as you can to be dealing as much damage as you can. That's what I'd personally recommend. All for infantry, actually, you could get Wind Scars, and that's going to be better than Call of the Loyal, but a lot more expensive. So that's up to you. It is around 5% more march speed once you talent the Wind Scars, though it is up to you depending on what you'd prefer. Wind Scars, definitely a very good accessory there for infantry. And I don't usually talk about them, but they are a good option. As for your crystal technology, like it is with most troops, just focus on whichever troop you have the most of. And I presume if you're watching this, you're going for infantry. 
get as much infantry crystal tech as you can. That is your best bet. So just focus on the infantry crystal tech. And the same thing can be said for your main technology, even from the earliest stages of the game to the latest stages of the game. Focus on your infantry related technologies. Now, I hope this video brought you some value on how to really become an infantry main player. They are a fairly decent troop. They are pretty bad for more than two marches though, so keep that in mind. Also, if you want to become an archer main like myself, then consider checking out my video from the other day where I discuss my investment plan for archers. Basically similar to this video, except it's all about archers. So if you're interested in archers, I highly recommend checking out that video. Now, I do want to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.